What's up, YouTube? What's going on? I'm trying to get this whole camera situation all fixed out, and I'm having issues left and right with my phone. But uh, what's going on? Um, just wanted to throw up a nice little um, FSD video today. I'm going to be going to a couple different places. It's a little um, late in the afternoon, but uh, wanted to kind of give you an update on what happened to me uh, the other day in regards to the car and whatnot. And uh, as of right now, I'm not in full self-driving, as you can tell. Um, but I am uh, going to be uh, turning it on in a couple seconds. But uh, I was just given word by Tesla Scope that the version 12 looks like it's rolling out to some customers as the employees had gotten it and now it's it seems to be rolling out to uh us not sure when uh but i did check mine uh the other day and i also checked today and it seems like there's nothing that is uh going on right now so we are uh basically um just waiting and so for me, it's pretty uh, pretty exciting. I can't wait to see what this thing's got. Um, as of right now, I have some issues with some of the um, some of the full self driving areas that uh, we've all talked about before. I'm just driving regular. I have uh, I'm in control of the car. I have my hands on the wheel, uh, but I will uh, let the car take over in a second or maybe a minute or so. Just wanted to talk to you real quick. Uh, but I'm going to be showing you a route that I take uh, regularly and for whatever reason the car seems to be I'm not sure exactly what's going on but the route is uh, is being taken over by these lanes that happen to be dotted lanes uh, dotted lines you can see right here I'm making a right hand turn and as, I, as you can tell like right about here you can see there's a dotted lane and Whenever I'm coming off or going on like an off ramp here in New Jersey, we have like little off ramps where you make like a U turn to go somewhere, or if you're turning to go somewhere. And if oncoming traffic is also looking to come onto the highway, for whatever reason, it seems like the car always wants to go to the left hand lane, even if there's no traffic, there's no nothing. You're going to see in this video right here, I'm going to show you. Um, it does happen where hard braking happens, and it's just really weird and really odd. I'm going to scroll down right here for a second, and let's just point to a place. Um, actually, you know what? This is what we're going to do real quick. We're going to do a supercharger in freehold. Just going to, um, because I do need to charge up a little bit, but I want to I wanna go to this one area with the supercharger because it seems like, for whatever reason, at this supercharger, there is always an issue and a problem for certain areas on the highway. Now, I'm driving on a highway, so it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, I am engaged right now, as you can tell. Uh, the car does have its uh, its blue light going on, uh, as you can tell right down the middle. The, the graphics have gotten so much better. The clarity of the the actual turn signal, and you can see the uh, the hardware is really clear. Uh, for me, I don't have any uh, marks against my uh, self-driving. Uh, because of the update, it actually gave us uh, new life, so to speak, in the last update that happened, So, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen here, um, but we'll probably be able to tell that it's going to be slow coming right off of here because there is a truck. As you can tell, there's a truck across the street right here, and that truck... Uh, is making a left-hand turn to go the opposite way down here. So the car may hesitate. I have somebody behind me. Nope. So here we go. So the truck is coming out. Um, as you can tell, it's blue. So the car is being very hesitant, doesn't want to drive into it. So there it goes. Not bad at all. It's probably going to stay in this left-hand lane for a second, asking me again, nags right away. And that's happened. I've seen that there was a lot of people complaining about the nags. You can tell this is really clear. The clarity on here is really good. Um, I am looking way ahead. Uh, you can tell that uh, the full self driving is in place, and I do have my hands that are resting on the wheels. I'm going to clear off my screen a little bit so you can see a little bit clearer. Uh, I had this really cool thing here. It's called uh, Screen Clean, and 
I'm not. I have no no affiliation to the company, but if you want to pick up one, it's called Screen Clean, and it's like a little. It's like a this little thing, and has uh, some really cool stuff on the on the side of it that actually helps to clean the screen really well. As we're going through the intersection here, um, apply for, uh, some slight force to the steering wheel. So as you can tell, we're also coming up on this little area right here where it's dropping down for whatever reason it's dropping down the speed limit saying it's 50 miles an hour here and then as soon as we go up a little bit further it's going to be uh going back up to 55 i do have my speed set to eight percent over and sometimes that leaves me about you know anywhere from two as the max you see here two miles an hour over the speed limit and it kind of goes a little bit further than that. We're coming up on a 55 mile an hour speed sign. So you'll see how fast it recognizes it with the vision. And you'll see here it goes from 50. And then as we get right over here, watch, boom, 55. So then we go up to 55 as the speed limit. And the max is set at 58. Here in New Jersey, we don't typically do the speed limit. Um, it's kind of, you know, one of those things where you do get a grace from a lot of the police officers I spoke to, they give you a grace of like anywhere from five to seven miles an hour over the speed limit. But this is the one thing that I that has happened in this, and you could tell here in full self driving, there's nobody in front of me, but this car does not want to go to the right for some reason. Um, there's another nag, so which is fine. But I'm looking straight ahead, and there's nothing going on. I do have cars that are coming behind me. Um, you can't tell yet, but there are cars that are going to be coming behind me. So the car usually will dip over to the right-hand side and get way ahead. So I'm going to get over because I want you to be able to see as well. <clears throat> there is an off-ramp over here that now I push the car over. I put on the blinker to get over to the right because there was a car on the left coming. You're going to see there is a dotted line here. And typically what happens is because this car is on my left, it probably won't happen now, of course. That, that dotted line of somebody coming onto the highway will then happen to be an area where this car will then automatically, regardless who's around, will just veer off to the left. And I watched a video a while ago, <clears throat> and the video explained to me that, that people were trying to figure out why is it that the car hard brakes really a lot. So I've had a lot of problems with hard braking recently. And I'm sure that um, you guys have had uh, some similar issues as well. There has been a lot of hard braking. Um, I do subscribe to this one app that actually puts up the screen here uh, while you're driving. I'm not sure if everybody knows about that, but if anybody does, just comment it below and I'll leave it. And I will, um, if you're driving a Tesla and you have full self driving, I will be able to allow you to, uh, to, to log on to get that app. And it's a one-time subscription. Um, but you're going to be able to see here. So as I'm driving, you're going to see there's a dotted line right here, on the, right there, right? And sometimes what happens is it, the car will put on its blinker and go to the left-hand lane. That's why I took this route is because I wanted you to be able to see that there's at times when this car just happens to do that. And I'm hoping that down here where I did put the navigation to go towards, is I wanted to be able to see whether or not the car would do this. A lot of these dotted lines that are on the side here that you'll be able to see here, for whatever reason, as I explained earlier, it'll, it, the car just veers over. Not sure what that means, but again, it's one of those things where we're, it's just trying to figure out exactly what, it, what it's doing and sometimes it's just very annoying. <laughs> um, but there's another uh, off ramp that's coming over here You'll be able to tell a little bit of a nag there. We got to make sure that we hold. Um, let me just push this up a little bit so you'll be able to tell a little bit further. So on this side here, um, you'll be able to see as well is that cars that are passing me on the left-hand side as well. You'll be able to see as I'm trying to fix this thing here as we're driving. Okay, there we go. Okay, a little bit better. 
that up in this one little area over here, and you'll see it. A little nag there, it's fine. So I hope you're all having a great day. I'm gonna explain to you what happened to me after we uh, kind of see what's going on over here. Um, it's pretty wild. <clears throat> so now we're coming up on, this is an exit over here. You'll be able to see there's an exit over here and these little white lines that are here on the right hand side. Now we're into a one lane. So you can tell there's one lane. On the left hand side here, you can see that there's a wide lane here, basically for cars that are disabled. And now here's this area that I'm talking about. So as we're gonna be making this turn a little bit, right? You're gonna see on this right hand side, there's gonna be a dotted line. And watch the car just automatically just wanna go over to the right for two seconds. And there it goes for two seconds. So now we're here, and then it just basically veers off and goes to what the white line is. But the entire time, the entire highway, you saw it, the entire time, the entire highway, basically had dotted lines everywhere. And it didn't want to do that anywhere except for right here. It's just odd that sometimes it just picks up these little things and does it, does it really well. Now up here, the car may actually, there's a, a road that's on the right hand side here, that's right here, that's no longer in service. Now the car may actually pick this up again, but it may not, a little nag. So you see there's dotted lines and going off and it's a, a road that has typically hard braked and gone into where the area to stop off. So it's just really odd um, to see that. And now we're gonna see it again over in this area here where you'll have to, forgive me, because I didn't really explain that how the, you can basically scroll up and down to control your speeds and whatnot as well. Most FSD um, <clears throat> beta testers will tell you about that. So you can control your speed by going up and down, not by just hitting the brake. So now the car is trying to find that white line and pull to the left here, but it's also going into this turn really fast. You can see the speed limit that's also um, from 50 all the way down and it's dropping heavily. So now we're creeping up on the stop sign and this was something that they were about to get rid of, which is to um, not do the New Jersey roll. We're still creeping, still creeping, and now it's ready to go. Okay, so it basically will, at this turn here, it's gonna probably wind up creeping again because that's typically how it has worked in the past. But basically what's going on here is a lot of the the signs that it's trying to read, because I've noticed that for forever while I'm driving with FSD is that you can tell that anywhere, there's a cop in the middle of the street here just going on as he wants to go. And you can tell that it's very odd the way that the car takes certain paths. And it happens to be taking this path right now that is, it's just really odd. You know, where the signage tells you one way and then the car is going off in another direction. And it's happened to um, a, quite a few of us. And it's not reading the proper, like here it says stop here on red. It's not worrying about that, it's worrying about the stoplight. But typically it'll say no turn on red. Sometimes it works really well, doesn't turn on red. Other times it's turning on red. So they're trying to figure that out. Now we're sitting here and I got somebody behind me. Uh, you gotta get. I gave it a little bit of a push for whatever reason it didn't want to go, and right now we're still going towards that uh, area where we were gonna drive to, and we're about to hit it right now. So you can tell that it's there. So now I'm going to stop it from there, end the trip there, right? And then I'm just gonna navigate. Right now we're gonna go here, get out of here, navigate home. So we're gonna navigate to home. And quickly go to the house and what it'll do is it'll come to this light and make a left here typically that's how um, it's worked in the past so now hopefully it's not see now it's slowing down it's trying to go away from what I just told it and here we are going into the left hand turn here so there we go nice and clean look at how clean the, the videos have gotten that clean that the um, intersects have gotten 
to where now, just right there, we were coming close to that car. Car's making a left, make a left, make a left. Okie dokie. There you go. Other thing that a lot of people talk about is that it nags you while you're going at the turns a lot for whatever reason. Um, there's a snow drift right here. I'm not sure that the car is not seeing it. I'm not sure why. But um, we have some more snow here, and I got to get off of there because that's going to not go well. So I disengaged. I disengaged because the car was about to hit snow drifts, and I didn't want to go through it. So I send off a little simple um, message to the team there. Let them know. Okay, single stalk. Uh, pay attention to the road. It hits you right away. Hit you with a nag right away. That's basically what, how it's done before. You can tell that the road uh, is wide by two lanes. And we're getting a little dark at nighttime right now. So the car does really well on that. So basically what has happened is... Um, as I've explained this before, uh, it's gotten so much better. Now that the version 12 is coming out, I'm hoping that it's it's gotten rid of some of the, the nags that we've all been uh, talking about and gotten so much better. Because that's going to just, not only, it's gonna help us tremendously move forward, especially with anything that has to do with uh, full self-driving. We're just all very, um, we're all very pleased by the uh, direction that the car the car has gone, and the full self driving how it's gone, and it's time. It's it's time uh, for any of it realistically. So for me, you can tell here now there's two lanes here. Now it's going to choose the right hand lane, which is good. We're still about 58 miles <clears throat> max. 55 is the uh, speed limit, and we're doing pretty good. Just one little area where I had to to uh, take over but again hands free not driving just skip I only touch the steering wheel just when I have to when it's when it's nagging you obviously so I want to talk to you about a story that has happened to me or not a story I should say about something that I posted that was a little story about what happened to me that happened to do with me driving and the best part was that while I was driving I was navigating to a supercharger the other day, and while navigating to a supercharger, the car shut off um, because of my low battery. Now, granted, I didn't know that the car shuts off. Um, I mean, I obviously didn't do any research on that. I didn't look at that. I didn't know what was going on with that. Um, I basically just, you know, as everybody else probably, has known that the car doesn't, as you get lower, not that it doesn't warn you, but you have to take control of your car, meaning and your energy, because the car will dip really quick on energy. It will drop from, you know, 15% down to 10% pretty fast, and you gotta be really aware of that, especially with the temperatures. Right now I'm at 28 degrees, but the other day I think I was at 20 degrees, and my uh, navigating to the supercharger, obviously by putting on preconditioning, caused my battery to heat up, obviously, and use more energy in the car, and I knew that, but I didn't, I was not aware that how fast that it would drain so I had gotten maybe, I would say probably a thousand feet from where I needed to be. The car was at 5% and I was a probably, you know, roughly anywhere from 11 miles to 17 miles on uh, on the, uh, the battery up here because I usually do miles. I don't do by battery percentage, mostly because it's, yeah, it plays minds with you when you're on a percentage. So for me, it's basically, do I have 100 miles on my car right now? I do. Okay, great. I'm going to drive around town. I'm not going to have any issues or problems. I'm good to go, and I'll just wait to plug in when I get home. So when I did that the other day, I basically was worried that as I gotten closer under 20 miles, I'm like, all right, well, it, it's probably going to be fine. And as I got to the supercharger, I got to the light, I crossed the light to get into where the gas station was, where they had the superchargers. I pulled into the gas station. And within seconds, the car was at 4%. Okay, I'm gonna pull into the spot. 
the car shut down and the car slowed down and came to a complete stop and the screen started blinking. You couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. Now, I didn't know what the hell was going on. Obviously, I'm, I, this is the first time that anything's ever happened to me like that. So, I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, oh my God, I need to Google this. I need to find this out. Oh, what happened here? You know, I was, you know, panicking. I pulled into the spot. I was backing up into the spot and the car turned off. So the car basically was counting down to save energy, and but the car was basically shutting off. I couldn't put it in neutral, I couldn't do anything at all. So I called up, and I, what, you know what's really funny about it is that I had other people that were charging, nobody knew what to do, nobody. It was just so odd that Everybody has a Tesla that was just like, oh my God, what happened to you? No, 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 no. They were, we were just talking and and nobody suggested anything to me. I had to do some research on the fly and I was sitting there for over an hour. I called up Tesla. They're sending somebody down. And sure enough, it was just really odd that I had to figure this thing out on my own. That in the front part of the car, there's like this little circle that everybody keeps thinking that it's a sensor and it's not. There's two little wires that are in there, and inside there, that helps you to pop the front in the front to allow you to get to the battery that's in the front to where you could then jump the car at that moment and put some energy in your car for whatever you're gonna use the car for and, and be able to jump the car. It was the wildest thing in the world. In two seconds like that, I was already up and gone, and I was at the supercharger and I was ready to go. It's just odd that um, I'm going to end my trip there and turn this off because I'm going to end the video. I wanted to tell you that story, but it's just odd that that happened to me. And I'm not, I'm driving now, so um, the moral to the story is do your homework, do your research, especially in the cold. you got to make sure that you understand how much energy you're using in the cold. Because if you don't, the car will eat you up alive. And I, I'm a perfect example of that. And if I would have done my research beforehand to know how much energy I was you know, using, I probably would have never ran out of um, any kind of energy at all. I would have been okay. But I didn't. Do your homework. That's a clear indication of people that are not doing their homework on these cars, as you see in the news. There's a lot of crazy nonsense that's going on in the news that people are not aware of what's happening with the EVs and this car has never given me any problems at all it just so happens that you have to do your own homework if you're gonna drive one of these cars understand the charging network understand the car and you will be fine you'll know when you have to charge you'll know when you have to do these things now I've for myself took the chance because I knew that I had the energy to be able to pull somewheres, didn't realize how much energy comes off of the actual pre-charging or pre-conditioning of the battery to allow my car to actually run out of energy and how fast it happens and never knew that the car can then shut down after like lower than 4%. Um, and it was pretty scary, but I learned my lesson. It cost me $125. But I'm telling you this for that reason. I should have done a video on it, but it happened so quick. Um, I was just trying to figure it out. But again, do your research, do your homework, and we'll put up some more FSD, FSD videos and also cooking videos that are coming to my channel because I'm going to be doing uh, some really cool cooking videos uh, as well. But you all have a great night. And uh, we'll talk to you on the next um, update.